We're at 7 o'clock. Call the meet, call to order this meeting of uh, July 29, 2019, Board of Selectmen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So this is a live broadcast. Pat, you want to start us off with some public service announcements? Uh, well, the first one is the Veterans Appreciation uh, Cookout, and I believe there's a gentleman here that's going to tell us all about that, Mr. Jim Curley. <laughs> Good evening, all. I, my name is Jim Curley, and I am a member of the Chelmsford Military Communicant Covenant Task Force, which is quite a mouthful, so I call it the CMCC. We invite and we sponsor a Veterans Appreciation Cookout, which will be held in just about two weeks on August 13th, Tuesday, from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Chelmsford Lodge of Elks Pavilion, right out there on Route 110. The CMCC charter is to support families of deployed service personnel, but in recent years we've expanded our scope so that we can support veterans and veteran families also in addition to other programs that are provided for them. This is our fourth year sponsoring this event, and we hope for another good turnout. There will be some dignitaries, but no speeches. The goal is to come mix, mingle, talk, and eat. It's open to all. You don't have to be a veteran. You don't have to be a military family. It's open to all so that we can come and give our appreciation. It's free to all also. By the way, CMCC funds are all private donations, so not a single penny of town money is used for this. So it's free to all from other donations. Hot dogs, hamburgers, watermelons, chips, desserts, water, and soda will be free. And there's a cash bar for other beverages. So please come to the Elks Pavilion, the Elks Pavilion on Tuesday, August 13th, 5 to 7 p.m., rain or shine. It's a pavilion, so it will be held. Come and help and in see our veterans, veterans' families, and thank them for their support. Questions? Hearing none, I expect to see all of you. Thank you. You want me to continue? Please do. Okay. All right, now, the next public service announcement is about a joint meeting between the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee to fill a vacancy on the Neshoba Valley Technical High School Committee. Um, due to the recent death of uh, uh, Richard DeFreitas, there is a vacancy on the Neshoba Valley Technical High School Committee. Uh, we'll be accepting applications. Um, we'll, be, we'll be meeting to, um, to fill that vacancy at our next meeting on, aug on August 19th. So uh, it would be appreciated if you're interested in the position to send an application. You can get an application on the town's website or just come to the town manager's office. We will actually be, ex usually do accept um, applicants that day also, but it's nice to know ahead of time if somebody is interested. And in the event that we um, uh, name the alternate our current alternate to um, on an Ashoba Valley Technical High School to that full position, we would then have the vacancy in the alternate position. So if you might be interested in the alternate position as opposed to the full position, um, follow the same process. Um, also on um, August 19th, we will have a joint meeting between the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee to fill a vacancy on the School Committee, the Chelmsford School Committee. This is due to the recent resignation of uh, Committee Member Al Thomas, and we thank him for his years of service uh, as a School Committee member. Um, it's the same process if you are interested in applying for that position. Um, again, that will be on Monday, August 19th at 7 p.m. that we will make that appointment. <coughs> Um, the next public service announcement has to do with the deadline for a submission of citizen petition warrant articles for the fall town meeting. The deadline is Monday, August 5th at 4 p.m., so that would be a week from today. 
Um, your, uh, your petition must have the signatures of 10 registered voters in the town of Chelmsford and be submitted to the town clerk's and town manager's office. And our last public service announcement, I'm going to leave to Christina Papadopoulos. Good evening, Christina Papadopoulos, town engineer. So I have two service announcements. Uh, the first one is the um, stormwater update about detention basins. So the stormwater division has begun the annual maintenance of the town owned detention basins. And um, just so you know, we have about 55 detention basins, about five four bays. And uh, maintenance throughout the neighborhood basins are going to begin shortly. So we wanted to let the residents know ahead of time that we're gonna be in front of their yards, behind their houses, et cetera. Sort of doing a lot of brush trimming, tree cutting, et cetera. I have some slides later that show some pictures of what it's gonna look like. The following slide is list of streets that we have, detention basins. Uh, many of these streets have multiple detention basins. That's why there's not quite 55, but um, that just gives you an idea. I'm not going to read all the streets. <laughs> so the following slide is a the copy of the letter that's going to go on the uh, doors of the residents who will um, be notified of the work that's going to be done. It says that the work is going to be done in the next few weeks. Our stormwater crew is going to be out there clearing the debris, mowing, removing brush that has accumulated. These are all town-owned detention basins. There's nothing that homeowners need to do, but it can be sometimes visually stunning for them to find, you know, a cleared piece of property, you know, <laughs> next to them. So we want to give them warning. Also, there's a phone number in case they have any questions or anything. Um, we also want to take this opportunity to remind residents that they um, should not be disposing their yard waste in uh, behind their, their homes into wetlands or in the detention basins. This time of year, we are getting a lot of calls with residents who are disposing their yard waste in the ditches behind their house. Unfortunately, when they do that, then upstream the water backs up and then those upstream neighbors will get flooded and then we get phone calls. So just a reminder about that. So this is an excellent picture of what the stormwater crew has been doing over on Katrina Road. Uh, the next three slides actually have a, a great before and after pictures. You see the first slide is what it looks like before. So we're at street level here. There is an outfall buried by leaves at street level. You can see how t the top of the, um, the shovel there, that, that red and black shovel, and they dug the next, um, the middle there, it shows the outfall is buried five feet. So this, you see the top of the shovel, <laughs> and how they, they dug and they found the very top of the outfall, and they found the head wall actually. And then after they kept digging, and lo and behold, there was a whole head wall and an outfall buried five feet below. You see the top there is Katrina Road. And um, this, uh, this outfall points to River Meadow Brook. And this is just showing an example of what it looks like restored once the stormwater crew can get out there, clean out all the debris. So this is years and years of people dumping their leaves and their, their grass clippings or whatever, and just years of not knowing where the outfall was. Now we know where it is, and it's all cleared up. The next example is on Turnpike Road. Um, we had a lot of heavy uh, rains this spring, and so you, no uh, you notice if you were driving down Turnpike Road, there was a lot in the before picture, there's a lot of ponding. For some reason, we had unnatural amounts of ponding on the side of Turnpike Road where we have a lot of country drainage, no, no curb and gutter like the typical, you know, like newer subdivision drainage. We have a lot of country drainage here. So the, the stormwater crew went in and cleared out the, the roadside drainage ditch, uh, cleared out the, uh, those, those pipes that you see there, rip-wrapped the, the swale, so now right after they did that, the water went away. It's really, really amazing what they can do, and it oh, looks that great. That also helps with mosquito control, too. Absolutely, yeah. yes. It's, it's part of everything. And the last before and after slide I have is of the DPW on Tracy Road. And you get a good idea. This is the detention basin behind the um, the DPW, and that is the uh, outlet structure there. And it's you know it's got some water at the bottom on the pond. That's that's pretty typical. But there's some pretty uh, aggressive trees and brush growing around. 
the um, around the alpha that really weren't supposed to be there. And then you can see what it's really supposed to look like in the after picture. So we have, a, um, Steve is standing there to show you a frame of reference, that's a person, and that's a pretty big um, detention basin. <laughs> and um, now you can actually see where the riprap outfall, you know, out, uh, the emergency out, uh, spillway is supposed to be and how it's all supposed to be grassed and maintained. And the water even dropped a little bit, you can see from the uh, previous picture. So that's just an example of what it's going to look like before and after. It's pretty dramatic. We don't want anybody to get worried about that. Do you have any questions about the detention basin maintenance before I go on to the next public service announcement? Yes. I just, I just have a question. I've had a couple residents, um, you know, complain to me about uh, recent ponding in their, their driveways and things like that. So, my, I mean, depending on where they are and if they're close to a detention basin, might this alleviate some of those issues for them, even it, if there's it, not one apparent on their property or even near their property? It depends on the slope of their driveway and, and if it's abnormally high and whether they notice, you know, it, it's a pattern, you know, with regard to, to weather and... I don't know. Okay. Don't know. That's we can <laughs> it's <see>. a very <laughs> specific. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. They can they can definitely give us a call. Okay. Okay. Any other detention basin questions? No. Okay. So my next public service announcement is also stormwater related. It is the formation of the stormwater master plan advisory committee. So Weston and Samson was hired to uh, put together our stormwater master plan. Um, they have finished the stream evaluations, which was going to be the first part of um, the master plan, you know, formation um, creation. And the next step is to form an advisory group to help steer the master plan. So they want to hear from the residents. They want to find out what's happening around town from a non-engineer's perspective. And so what we've done is put together a, an advisory committee made up of the various representation listed here. Each precinct um, is represented as well as various board members. Um, municipal employees and two representatives from Weston and Samson. So we don't just get a bunch of engineers talking about stormwater, we actually get real residential input. And feel free to, um, if you're not a meeting rep, feel free to reach out to what your meeting rep and talk to them about your stormwater um, concerns and they can bring it to the advisory group and share that with us. Christina, are the actual names posted somewhere? Um, like how I do we know which I will check. precinct I have a list of names. I will I will read off the list. Okay. Um, I will check to see if the list is posted somewhere. I, yeah, I think, Chris, I think, it, I think uh, did Christina Christina is putting it on our website. If, it's, okay. if it hasn't happened, it will be happening very soon. Okay, yes. That's the right answer. <laughs> it will happen soon. Thank you. Can I ask another question here, or you want to let her finish? Yeah, good. Go so go on the representation list, um, the only question I had was, <laughs> We had a lot of businesses that felt like they really got socked with this, the fee structure for the stormwater system. So I'm just wondering, would it make sense to have somebody from the business community to represent our business community on this advisory committee? And you don't have to answer I mean, now. It's just a, a thought. I don't know if it makes sense or not. Paul, what do you think? Sorry. Yeah, that's Sorry fine. to throw it yeah. at you. Yeah. I, I you, don't don't know, so, um, you can ask the business association to send a representative. Association. Yeah. Um, that's fine. Sounds like it's going to be a pretty large yeah. committee as it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 that will matter. No. Yeah. You know, yeah, I can definitely think about that. Thank you. That's, it's just that's a, a good question. idea. If it doesn't make no, that's sense, a good idea. Fine. I know. I'll, I'll think about that a little more. Um, so the. The master plan is developing a comprehensive, um, uh, let's see, no, <laughs> we're trying to develop a comprehensive master plan for the stormwater system to help direct the future resources to maintain, protect, and improve the assets and natural resources that the town of the town through proactive stormwater management. The key term there is proactive. We're trying to plan ahead of time so we use the money well, okay? And um, they will direct the development of the stormwaters, uh, town's stormwater management master plan. So I'm calling it SWIMPAC because it's a really long name. SWIMPAC seems easier. The meetings will only be once a month as needed. Um, 
Uh, it will end May 2020 because that's when the master plan uh, is due. And the kickoff meeting will be this Wednesday, uh, July 31st at 7 p.m. in room 205. Uh, I'll, I'll list, I have a list of who, uh, who has agreed to join. Um, so sorry if I mispronounce names. <laughs> Sam Chase, Emily Antle, Mike Walsh, Diane Baxter, Glenn Thorne, Joanne Anderson, Kathy Dufay, Carrie Wetzel, Christina Papadopoulos, a stormwater engineer yet to be named, Stephen Yonley, Evan Bolansky, Katie Gurton, Sue Rosa, Sean Shanahan, and from Weston and Sampson we have Jerry Schwartz and Steve Roy. Questions? Actually, I have a question about representation of um, businesses. If a business is in a particular district, in a situation, I, I mean, like they, they're located there, yeah. can they use the town meeting rep for that district as? I mean, it, it's, it's a liaison point. I mean, it, it's a ad hoc committee that's going to be less than a year. I, I would just think anybody could come in and provide you know they can come I don't think they need to send a proxy or <clears throat> I would imagine there would be yeah open like public comment yeah oh, yeah. yeah because I mean, the idea is to get right. comments from the public and put it together and create a master plan so so yeah but you weren't asking for a business rep from every district or every precinct no no just one no. Just yeah like, oh, okay. somebody, yeah right. And like I said, the meeting the meetings are there. They can people can attend. I think right. it's going to be a yeah. pretty open process. I just wanted to make sure there were multiple yeah. avenues. Sure. So. Definitely. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Before we leave public service announcements, do you want to just make a note? For, um, it's on our website, and I know it's been talked about, but and we've gotten some emails about the traffic detour that's coming up uh, on the 31st uh, on Wednesday at 7 p.m. There'll be a detour at uh, fifth, you know, at Groton Road um, because of the work that's going on at the culvert at 15, 515 Groton Road in Westford. And so the crews are going to be shutting down Groton Road completely on the 31st at 7, and it'll be closed through Sunday, August 4th at 7 p.m. And the crews are going to be working around the clock during this time. Um, I know the chief was in and spoke to Michael and me about it today, but they're going to have a detailed person there throughout the work, I mean 24-7 for that whole period. I don't know if you want to describe the route for people to better understand it. Well, the route will come down through Main Street in West Chelmsford and then reroute out through Westford. But we had already received concerns from citizens in that area, and the chief had already committed to putting patrols out there. But the contractor has since come back, and they will be paying for the round-the-clock coverage from the police department. So there will be details out at both ends, and the chief said there will be Chelmsford cruisers out there to ensure there's no problems and to reroute the traffic. Where's it going to start on Groton Road? Triangle? Right at the triangle, and then it's going to go to Oak Hill Road, goes back to yeah. Groton Road in Westford. So it's that, you know, that shaped area right there. What were those dates again? It's it's the 30, 31st, 30, this Wednesday, at 7 o'clock, and it goes through Sunday the 4th at 7 p.m. Route 40 in Westford. I've been driving my daughter to a camp. Yeah. It's been uh, been slow. <laughs> so I would I would expect... Slow downs in Chelmsford right. too. While well, so, that works, yeah, being so that, done. that's so. the area. See, the area by the Ace Hardware and so forth in Westford, and then obviously people will still have access to the highway, but they're going to be diverted, you know, yep. from the highway interchanges to the detour, because you just can't cross that culvert because they're doing a culvert replacement in Westford. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. With that, that brings us to open session. Is there anybody that would like to address the board at this time? Seeing nobody, Pat, would you like to go through the committee vacancies for us? Okay, as of today, we have the following uh, committee vacancies. Uh, there's one vacancy on the Arts and Technology Education Fund Committee, <coughs> two vacancies on the Capital Planning Committee, three vacancies on the CCA Advisory Committee, one vacancy on the Center Village Master Plan Implementation Committee, five vacancies on the Civic Committee, two vacancies on the Community Action Program Committee, Five vacancies on the Council on Aging, um, one of which is a full-time full uh, position, and the other four are associate member positions. The T Cultural Council can have up to 21 total members, and uh, there are several vacancies there. 
two vacancies on the Energy Conservation Committee, one vacancy on the Historical Commission, three vacancies on the Holiday Decorating Committee, two vacancies on the Middlesex Canal Commission. The Parade Committee is welcoming all applicants. One vacancy on a Permanent Building Committee, one vacancy on a Personnel Board, five vacancies on a Public Celebrations Committee, three vacancies on a Sign Advisory Committee, two vacancies on a Skate Park Committee, and one vacancy on the Tree Committee. If you're interested in applying for uh, a position on any of these committees, there is an online application you can fill out on the town website or at the town manager's office. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item five, public hearings. Is this what you want me to do, Pat? Oh, I'll do it. So it looks like we have an all alcohol, alcohol beverages restaurant, common vigilar and entertainment license for Paxton 20, DBA Leo's, uh, Max and Leo's Artesian Pizza. <coughs> I'm attorney Robert Dionisi. I represent the applicants. Um, I have uh, with me, and I was told by, I believe, the uh, secretary of the board to deliver the notices that were sent out uh, to the abutters. So I have the list of abutters. I have the uh, proof of mailings, and I have some of the returned uh, green cards. And I have a copy of some of the others that have not. May I proceed? Please, please, please. Sure. Yeah. All right. The applicant is here before you tonight for the uh, three licenses that uh, were noticed in the uh, publication. Um, with me tonight is Heather Simpson, who is the applicant for Paxton 20 LLC, and Max and Leo Candidas, who are the operators of the business. Um, the site is at 20 Boston Road uh, here in the town of Chelmsford. It is the former, um, friendly. I believe, the former friendly site. Uh, the, lease, the lease has been signed uh, by Paxton 20, so they're ready to go. Um, there's, I believe, according to the, the applicant, uh, as set forth in the application, is about $275,000 worth of improvements going into the site. Um, they are anxious to move forward. Um, they're here tonight to answer any questions that any of the members of the board have for them. They have other sites. One is at Fenway in Boston and one in Newton, and one that opened up recently in the past year in the town of Sudbury. And they're looking to expand their business into the town of Chelmsford. And uh, I know that they'll be welcomed here in the town. Max and Leo are here to answer any questions, as is Heather. There is one request, however, the applicants would like to make before the board tonight. And hopefully they will, the, the board will vote on a waiver of having a second meeting. I say that because they are anxious to open up um, as soon as possible. Um, uh, from my experience, the commission does move fairly slowly once the board turns in its uh, notice to the Alcohol Beverage Control Commission. So we're going to move as fast as we can with the commission, uh, assuming that the, uh, of course, that the, uh, the license is approved here by the local authorities. Um, so if there's any questions, I'm happy to um, have any of the uh, three parties that are here tonight to answer any questions that the board might have. So on the, on the um, seating plans, my understanding I just want to confirm this. My understanding is that the, the 85 person seating capacity is going to be on the first floor or on the patio, and the basement is an employee area, or is that? Um, the, the seating is all upstairs. All upstairs. Um, it's 85 seats. In this total occupancy, we're looking for 99. Seating mm -hmm. is 85. Some will be outside. Those will go away in the winter. We'll never exceed over 85 anywhere on the on the first floor. Probably only have 65 to 70 in the in the winter time because we can't fit that many per code. Yeah. So we're going through that now. Mm -hmm. And in the basement is going to be where, like we did in Sudbury and Newton, the kitchen is in the basement. No guests will be down there. Just just employees in in a prep area. Okay. Thank you. Yep. This is Maximilian Candidas, by the way. Oh. Hi. Hi. Not to be confused with Brother Leo, they're twins, obviously, but they... Uh, Just out of curiosity, what attracted you to Chelmsford? Uh, the demographics, I mean, for, from what we're looking at, you have a great day population here mm -hmm. and, it, and a great night population that's really hard to find for, for restaurants. Um, 
my business plan stays outside really the 120 the 95 128 area west of that um, and uh, it was a great fit the building the landlord called me and and it, we jumped at it so it, just mostly Thank the you. demographics in the building on, on uh, the application for the license, there's uh, one question that um, I, I see you neglected to answer. Uh, under the occupancy of premises, it says, will the landlord receive revenue based on percentage of alcohol sales? And the what? It, it asks if the landlord will receive on, on page three of the application, number seven, occupancy of the pre premises, that it, will the landlord receive revenue based on percentage of alcohol sales? Absolutely not. Okay. No. That's it, a flat, it, flat amount lease. It's a flat lease. Yeah, yep. okay. flat lease. Is no no sharing of profits, no sharing of any alcohol beverage uh, oh. of any kind. You probably want to correct that before you send it to ABCC. They might send it back to you. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. I, I will send in a letter to amend that. Okay. You have uh, egress from in, in, the, in the basement. The it, past we're, the yeah, yes, we're working with the with the building department. There was a. A bulkhead that we're going to turn into an egress coming out the back it's on the plans there you'll see um, on the basement plan off the back that'll have an egress right there she didn't put a door in it but that will have a door to the outside so it'll be exposed from the top floor in the in the basement so the be the fire department been over to look at it at all or the building department I guess so we're going we're working through the the code codes with the building department yes okay. but it all they determine all if it if the plan works and everything else. Mm -hmm. This is a twenty year lease. Correct. That's a commitment. Mm. Ten. I have a. I had a fifteen in Newton and it went by so fast. <laughs> <laughs> when are you when are you kind of looking at opening? I'm really we're really hoping to be open by the middle of October that's our Mr. Dennis and myself went through the Alcoholic Beverage Commission for Sudbury and it took way longer than we anticipated and saw the, the Sudbury board right about this time and didn't receive a license until December so that's why we're asking for uh, not to re be in a second meeting just for the reason that I can apply and, and save a month worth of time but from what I've heard the um, ABCC has hired some more investigators, so things aren't as bad, but I'd still like to really get along quickly and hopefully be open in the middle of October. Yeah, they were short-staffed for a while. They so. were. Local authorities work very quickly and timely. It's, it's the investigators that we've run into a little problem with now. I, mean, I, I will say that your actions, um, I think, agree with your comment. Uh, you know, we know you got the property quickly. You've already started work. You're flying along through it. Um, so we can see you, you definitely are. I opened in December with the last one. I'm, I'm really hoping that I can open before December because it's it's tough to open a business that time of year. Mm -hmm. um, and I went through it in Sudbury, and I'm just hoping to avoid that again right now. Okay. Is it a public hearing? Excuse me? Public hearing. Yeah. So this is a public hearing. Is there anybody that would like to speak? I'm seeing none. Should motion to close the public hearing? Well, is is it uh, what's the sense of the board? Uh, they have uh, asked that we waive the the two week. The, it's actually be a three week waiting period this time since we don't meet again until August nineteenth. Uh, I know Christina did call you, and there was a, a misprint on that. We wouldn't be meeting on a Friday night anyway. <laughs> I was wondering about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, the one thing I'll say on that is we've had a lot of discussions at this table about being pro business in this town and really putting the word out there and his actions I would say their actions speak very loud I mean I have not seen a building get bought get under construction and start moving so quickly um, so I'm more apt to say yes because of the three-week wait and allowing these guys to get a move on it than say no I have no problem with it. It's also in an area where there's other restaurants already with licenses so exactly. I can't see that it's going to be controversial yeah I can't imagine people in the area would have objections given the and, and they have a track record too I mean yeah you know, it's that's yeah you know, that, that proceeds it's a known that. quantity so and I like wings beer nachos and pizza <laughs> so, so right well, so, so, so you, so gotta, you gotta open September <laughs> yeah it is it's a conflict I can't <laughs>
Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion that we waive our, our usual um, uh, meeting waiting period and close the public <laughs> hearing for, uh, for Max and Leos. We have a motion. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll make a motion that we approve the um, all alcohol uh, beverage license for, for Max and Leos and the uh, convictors license and entertainment license as presented. I'll second. We have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank Thank Licenses. First one we have is for a one day license for the um, table of plenty, and I don't think that Mary's here. Um, I will say she did send me a quick note um, that they're applying for a one day beer license for the table of plenty uh, at the senior center. They've been doing, uh, th they've served their first meal over nine years ago. Um, they have been providing free meals every Tuesday evening from 5 to 6 p.m. The mi mission is to provide a nutritious meal for the needy and alleviate social isolation for those attending the meal. Over the last week, they've uh, averaged over 90 guests per meal. Um, last week? Over the last week. Okay. Yeah. Um, takes a lot of effort altogether, so they rely on over 200 volunteers to make the meal a success. They've had the volunteer appreciation dinner um, on these occasions in the past, and they'd like to do the same on October 17th, 2019. The Senior Center has graciously allowed us to hold the event there, um, so they're looking for that liquor license. They do have their tips with a, a certified bartender, Richard McDonald, who I know, and um, He's a very reliable, great guy, and I've provided a copy of his certifications with the license application. They're looking to serve um, 100 to 120 different volunteers at the dinner, um, and that's what they've had in the past. So that was from Table Plenty. Can I make a motion that we approve the uh, one-day beer and wine license uh, for a Table of Plenty to be exercised at the Chelsea Senior Center as presented? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we have a one-day all-alcohol beverage license. Um, the Chelmsford High School Alumni Association block party fundraiser to be held at the American Legion Post 313 90 Groton Road on August 17th, 2019. Is there anybody here? No. We have approved this in, in the past, although in the past it, it has not been by the Alumni Association, but I think yeah, that's it. Legion is an annual one. I'm sure it's going to be a similar situation. Right, right? yeah. It, it looks like, yeah, it's just about exactly the same, yeah, the same layout. So we have a motion? Um, so I'll make a motion that we approve the, the one-day all-alcohol beverage license for the Chelmsford High School Alumni Association to be exercised at the um, out, outside the, the American Legion on uh, Groton Road as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So the next one we have is the one day all alcohol license for uh, the St. Barnett's Armenian Church at 180 Old Westford Road for their annual picnic August 11th, their scholarship dinner September 28th, and their annual golf scholarship dinner on October 2nd. That's another one that we yeah, yeah. do every year. We've never had a, an issue with them, so I'll uh, make a motion that we approve three one day all alcohol. Uh, licenses for St. Bartonin's uh, Armenian Church for August 11th, September 28th, and October 2nd, as presented. I will second. Paul, quick question. Yeah. How often can a place have a one-day beer license? 30 in one like calendar year. 30 in a calendar year. Yep. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And so the next one is for uh, uh, Center Brickhouse Pizza, um, it's a entertainment license for Center Brickhouse Pizza, Pizza, One Central Square on August 31st, 2019. Hi guys. 
introduce oh, yeah. yourself, Mike. Michael Brown from uh, Senator Cross Pizza Inc. Okay. And this is for. Just trying to expand our um, entertainment license for the August uh, 31st from 4 to 10 outside. Same thing as we did for the. Uh, 4th of July. 7 to 3. Yeah, the day before. For the, yeah, 7 to 3. Does anybody have any questions? Um, so we do have um, uh, responses. I know you, you've probably seen them from the police and fire. Um, would there be any consideration that you would have a, a police detail on, on site? I know um, there is there are concerns about uh, getting in and out when there's uh, when an event. I mean, if we have to, we, we, I was, this is the first I've heard of it. Why they said there was a complaint about it? No, well, I, um, there is the, on the fire chiefs, um, uh, actually the police chiefs, um, not notice it said I would also recommend that adequate ingress to the venue be maintained at all times for emergency vehicles. Um, I, it would seem that a, a, a detail would would make that uh, a, a reality. And that's one police detail. I, I would think. Well, I don't know how how the rest of the board members feel. I mean, as opposed to none, I think one is better than none. <laughs> I mean, he wrote a, an art, a paragraph on the noise, and he just put one line about the egress. I don't know. You sure isn't? Well. was not more upset about the noise? But noise is, noise you don't really, you can just go in and, and shut them down. Uh, yeah. The you know, how many times have you done it during Ju uh, the July 4th weekend? You like during two or three years. It's been really good. What is, yeah, what is the event this time? What's that? What is the reason for the event? Uh, it's just, I'm just another, like, it's been good. It's you the, know, uh, for, you know, the Labor Day weekend. July, so it's just Labor Day weekend. Day weekend. Yeah, so it's been... You gonna sing like a lot of families? No. Then we need, then we'd need two details. Sing. <laughs> Why sing? Well, you don't need anything. Nobody there. there and, uh... and there, there's no problem with Chief Ryan's request to set up by noon on that Friday for inspection. No, no. I don't know why they. I don't know why they'd have to have a detail if yeah. nobody else has had to have one. But that's up to. Well, it is kind of a. A difficult place to get into and out of. Um, I mean, if nobody else wants one, then that's okay. I'm just bringing it up as a possibility. All you know, and they could be there if there were any other issues that came up. I know on the fourth, on their Thanksgiving, when they have that that big event, they are required to have several details. I yeah, believe. Yeah, we stopped that. That was just that was right. a bunch of young kids. These these yeah. these are all family and stuff like that, especially the Fourth of July. So. We get rid of all that. Well, and the 4th of July, there's very little traffic there because the center is effectively closed. Yeah. So you have details there. Already? Anyway, yeah. already, yeah. I mean, it, my fear is that if he pays for a detail, he looks at this and says, I'm not doing it again. But could we agree to maybe have them keep an eye out? And if there is a traffic issue, then next year we definitely have a detail. I, I just feel bad. He's, it's, he's standing in front of us and it comes up. I don't know. Mm -hmm. if, yeah, probably doesn't even know what the cost of a detail is, let alone. Do you know, yeah. Paul? What the cost of a detail? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got it's fifty does. bucks an hour. Yeah, yeah it's, it's time and a half the yeah. sergeant's rate. So you're, you're but he probably uh, you haven't mm -hmm. talked to Charlie and haven't done the, the math out to figure out so, you know yes. what's it going to run you to have a detail. But well, I just think bucks, we're surprising well, it. Sixty bucks an hour, roughly. Yeah, I think we're just it's a minimum of four hours. Too. Four hours. Yeah. Well, this event is going to be for. Six hours? Was it? Four to ten, yeah, six, six hours. Six hours. Well, then it's eight hours, because they make you go, they double it. You can't go four. You're talking about 500 bucks by the time you're done. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, I'm that, an event like this, that's four or five. That, I mean, I don't know. I don't know on your scale on what your average is. I just think that we, if, if that was the case, we should have given more notice <coughs> than while he's standing in front of us. But I agree. Do we want to do a motion or? Well, okay. I mean, I, I, I guess if there is an issue, then you would be okay if if the police chief came and say and said if there's a, you know, an issue with with the crowd or whatever, and it looks like there's going to be an issue with the ingress and in ingress that um, you would be amenable to him bringing in a detail. Yeah. Last minute. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll let him know that so that he has that option. Okay. 
currently the way it's set up, there's only one in and out there, right? Because of the construction? Right. That's right. Yeah, which is all the more reason why I think it would be better. The stage is going to be taking up a great portion of that. Yeah. We won't have that much traffic in here, will you? Because there's a stage and a crowd and everything. Yeah. Well, then you need even walking in. Yeah, no. crossing the street. Huh? They'll be walking in. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve the uh, uh, one-day expansion of the entertainment license for Center Brick House Pizza on for August 31st. Um, for the hours of 4 to 10 p.m. as presented. I will second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Good luck, Mike. All right. Next one is we have a request for an expansion of the entertainment license for KMP Restaurant Group doing business as Moonstones at 185 Chelmsford Street for live outdoor entertainment on various dates this summer. Anybody here? Everyone. You can call me Sadi, please, make it easy. <laughs> um, we are looking for various days for the, uh, the expansion, of course, in August for the live entertainment on our patio. Uh, Thursdays between 6 to 9. Uh, it's going to be acoustic guitar, you know, solo uh, performer. And uh, maximum about 40 people, basically trying to bring the, you know, coastal environment in our local town, you know, right over here. People doesn't need to travel long distance. So just have fun, basically. Any questions? Questions? There will be no structure. Mm -hmm. So we're doing, this, tent, we're doing this for the August dates. We're not doing it retroactively to July we 25th. We can't do it retroactively. Yeah. That's okay. my fault. Okay. I'm from New Hampshire. Technically, live free or die. I'm sorry about it. <laughs> 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 I learned this actually from our uh, sister restaurant, Cobblestones Jam. She told me, well, you wanted to do it, but you need to ask first. And I said, okay. <laughs> and no, I can well, actually I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't take too kindly with somebody saying, uh, you know, come in and ask him, you know, um, to be excused rather than asking permission but um, but uh, that, that being said the police department did receive a complaint as far as the noise for last week um, was there a reason why it was you know you, you're saying it's going to be acoustic um, it doesn't sound like that would be very loud but yet there was a complaint about honestly the noise. I heard that exactly the same day that I came here uh, to ask permission or license permit basically and I kind of investigate what happened uh, and my experience and again honestly behind the shutting door shut door about a 10 feet away I couldn't hear clearly I don't know how come somebody complained I'm not here to argue of course mm -hmm. there wasn't a lawn mower out there I mean I even recorded on my phone the next time to see how loud could be gone you know and uh, I even downloaded on my phone uh, measure the decibel how far it goes how high it goes uh, it was between 70 to 80 decibel it was when they go to high pitch of the notes and everything but generally it was between there and as I said I, if you want to listen I record it on my phone you're happy to do it it just we are here to entertain people and it's not the we are upsetting people and last weekend was it outside yes ma'am How big is that patio? What's it's the capacity? capacity, maximum 40 people. And that's about what you had uh, each, you've had it a couple times already? Yes, sir. Have you had more than 40 people? Had, did you have 40 people? There's no place that we can sit more than 40 people. We do understand that if, they, that if the police do get um, complaints, they will have to come and you know, depending on, on their, yeah, they so can use their discretion as far oh, as absolutely. closing it down. Absolutely. So. I mean, as I said, I, if I knew that time, they, they didn't even notice anything. We didn't call the restaurant or anything. Uh, it could be put a little bit down. I mean, as I said, we are not there upsetting people or neighbors. We just having fun for a summertime. Okay. So if it does happen again and someone calls the restaurant, they should ask for you? They can. 
I, I'm working every yeah. Thursday, so that's what's going to happen, happen Thursdays. As I, uh, we can put it down. I mean, honestly, as I said again, last Thursday, I seen our neighbors sit down on the patio trying to uh, listen, I guess, but noise didn't go to traffic, over the traffic, and they changed their mind, they move inside. That's my scene. And I don't even know who's complained. I'm just speculating, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Uh. So I'll make a motion that we approve the expansion of the um, outdoor entertainment license for Moonstones for August 1st, 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th from 6 to 9 p.m. as presented. I will second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All set. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. All right, the last one. <coughs> um, we have an application for transfer of stock. Uh, request the ABCC request additional to previously approved multi amendment for wines and malt, uh, malt beverages license patty corporation doing business as Yong Tong to Thai restaurant. Yeah, this was one that was before the board previously. And much like what happened is when we went to the ABCC, they said, Well, you, oh, you didn't include the transfer of the stock um so they sent it back so yeah. the agreement and and yep. they're going to move it forward they just want the board of selectmen on record of voting to approve the transfer of stock so that's that's why it's on the agenda that's why they're not here it's it's really you know to okay complete the formality of it so the board would take that vote you know be all set. okay i'll make a motion that we approve the um transfer of stock in addition to the other uh licenses that we have granted uh to um, Padi Corporation uh, doing business as Yutong to Thai Restaurant at 61 Central Square, as presented. I'll second. A motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, that brings us to reports and presentations. First up, Ron, Director of Business Development. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, Select Board and everyone. My name is Lisa Maroney. I'm the Director of Business Development for the Town of Chelmsford, and I'm here to present my quarterly update. Brief agenda of the things I'd like to um, cover and update you on. Um, I did a year in review for you in January of the year 2018 um, accomplishments. So I'm going to kind of catch up <coughs> from January to July of this year and then give you a, a brief projection of what my uh, work plan is for July to October and, and summarize a few other things for you. I know this is a bit of an eye chart and I'm available to share a copy with any of you individually for a closer look. This is currently the listing of available space um, at the crossroads of 129, equaling about 950,000 square feet at the moment. We have filled up um, about 600,000 square feet um, in the last year and a half or so. Um, we do have a new website that is up and operating, ready to go. A few other things that we've accomplished uh, that I can go into a little bit of detail with you, the tenant working group uh, brochure that we've prepared, the video that many of you have already seen. We've been doing site tours and the site readiness grant. Um, and so I just, yep. So the website, ChelmsfordCrossroads129.com, it was initiated by Eric Salerno of the EDC, and he has moved on so that we uh, continued. Uh, m m most of the work was done by Evan Belansky, myself, and Donald Van Dyne, chairman of the, uh, of the EDC. So the website here pretty much has captured everything and anything we could possibly um, feel was was relevant to anyone interested in the crossroads. I don't know if you want to click around on, on some of the menu items there. It's uh, meant to be easily maintained and updated. We plan to keep it very um, progressive with the data and relevant information on available space, um, projects that are 
accomplished and ongoing and upcoming. There is information there for realtors, for people that are looking to understand who the tenants are in 129. Um, please definitely feel free to um, move around on the website and there's statistics there about housing, employment, daytime employment, um, and we're certainly open to hearing from you on any feedback or suggestions or uh, concerns. This is our primary source of uh, marketing right now. Um, been sharing it with uh, pretty much anywhere I can. and. Um, so again, it'll be administered and maintained by mostly myself um, and Donald. Um, Evan has certainly helped us fill in a lot of the details with the history of 129 <coughs> that I might be unfamiliar with. And this is um, an ongoing you know, development. So um, um, certainly please email me any ideas or thoughts. And um, we're still working on some of the final touches, cross-connecting links to um, other projects, um, we talked about the 197 Bill Ricca Road website. Um, so we're, we're still working on the finer details to um, complete it, but it is up and, up and operating and, um, you know, please take a look at it. So this is something interesting that has developed um, unexpectedly throughout the process of the site readiness grant. We've gotten a, a following and um, this kind of came forward out of a variety of um, stakeholders and this team of people approached me interested to be a part of tenant recruitment for 129. A lot of people feel the potential going forward and the opportunities that are there. So this group of professionals are all uh, very accomplished in um, life science, biotech, advanced manufacturing, advanced technologies. They all have deep portfolios of successful completed uh, projects in retrofitting um, space, available space for life science and biotech. So they've been bringing up each of their networks and contacts and pushing out the Chelmsford Crossroads opportunities um, throughout, their, throughout their contacts and things. So we've been touring uh, buildings together and looking at what the empty space looks like, what the challenges are, and the hope is to present a potential tenant proposal package um, as we work forward with some of the property owners of what could be in this space and what that package would look like for fit up, maybe including uh, ballpark expenses towards life science or um, advanced technologies. So the word is out and I've got a small entourage following me around um, and growing. Uh, there's a couple other members that um, have reached out to me and just wanted to be a part of it. We attended a BizNow event um, and that kind of generated a lot of interest and, and more people that would like to be a part of this team. So starting to control it a little bit more so that it's effective and there's a good um, circumference of all the services that are needed when we try to fit up outdated empty space. But the good news is that the property owners and the realtors and the brokers are very interested to connect with us and they're kind of um, reaching out to me. So tomorrow we are touring six different locations with this team and we are bringing around uh, Mansfield Biotech Incubator that's looking to expand and had um, been referred to us by one of the team members here. So it's starting to connect. Um, and we'll learn more tomorrow as we as we get started. But I think it's a good opportunity at no cost to the town to help promote the business park and the Chelmsford Crossroads by utilizing these other available uh, professionals. And, and we'll see where that goes. Also created a uh, brochure. I, has everyone received a copy of this brochure? I brought I brought extras if you're That's interested. Great. You Thank updated you. already? You just gave this I have one. This is a newer one. Oh, okay. <laughs> what changed? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So this brochure was um, originated by what we like to refer to as the master map, which is on the inside that everybody keeps requesting. Um, it um, shows everything that's been happening, things that are ongoing, things that are accomplished, uh, the business opportunities, and it's a great map. And I see people in, in you know, circle around it and point at it, talk about things, and then I get phone calls. So page one, uh, because it's a trifold, outlines the different incentives and amenities that we can offer aside from maybe some other available spaces. So we're trying to work um, in our own way and present ourselves with our with our own um, our own way. You know, we get referred to a lot of the Burlington Third Ave, and you know, we're we're going to be doing our own thing. So we've got our logo, our um, branding campaign, and creating <coughs> an identity for the park. So this is one of the printed materials. Uh, we didn't want to spend too much on. Um, handing out paper, but it's easily mailed and um, low cost. So um, that's our first printed item for uh, promoting the crossroads. We're already getting responses and um, calls from the, bro from the brokers of an empty space that want to have these brochures in hand um, 20 at a time where they can hand it out to clients that they're touring of their space. So I'll be bringing it around with me tomorrow. And there's page two that we're talking about with the master map. It's always um, it's a little bit of a moving target, so we're continually updating it. And I, I already know there's a few other things we can add to it, but that basically is a great single view that adds a lot of um, interest to discussion and, and learning more about some of those opportunities. So Lisa, with the case of something like um, 152 Turnpike, Right, it, it's an accurate statement that it's fully permitted, but it's also out in the public domain that it's in land court right now. So, is there was there any discussion about, or have you gotten any pushback on that as being part of the brochure, or no, no, no okay. it hasn't been any any negative feedback or any concern about conflicting projects or information. Um, no. Um, I, I would think I would hear that if if so, but um, certainly not. It's been very well received. So it's um, just representing what's what's there now. What's there? You know whether it, whether it has a few things to work out um, to actually bring to the de development, but those are the the opportunities to to work forward from. And these yeah. get updated pretty regularly. Yeah, I've already ordered a second print. So um, we brought them to the BizNow event. That was the first um, business event that we went to where we actually had something to, um, you know, um, start a conversation. So we were able to um, get in front of each attendee and hand them one of these brochures. And um, I think three or four of us were able to attend, and it was it was a great event. It was a it was a good way to uh, kind of experiment what a possible, um, you know, what that experience is before we get into the more um, costly and you know biotech um, conferences and things like that. So we were able to um, sponsor and receive uh, five tickets that have a value of five hundred dollars plus provide a printed brochure. So we attended that for. Um, I think it was seven hundred dollars we paid to get our brochure out and five of us to attend. And there were, I think there were one hundred and eighty attendees or maybe two hundred something along those lines. But I, I did get some follow up phone calls uh, um, the next day. So part of uh, marketing and just bringing awareness mm -hmm. uh, to what we're doing that a lot of people wouldn't know otherwise. Basically, as a municipality, we're we're up to the idea of private property owners promoting their own sites and how their brokers and how their realtors uh, promote their sites where 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 those circles are. Um, you know, they have websites, they have clients, they have a following. They're they're doing advertising and things like that. So we're just trying to. Um, you know, ease our way into a marketing campaign and figure out what works best before we um, get into like a full-blown, um, you know, 
identity of the park and, and what we want to be known for, what we want to pursue. So the tenant recruitment team felt best that the type of empty space we have could be a great fit for life science or biotech with some of, um, you know, multi-story or low ceilings, um, you know, be a great way to fill up space. Are there property owners on the tenant recruitment <coughs> team or is it people who service the Mo mostly people who service that um, are connected to those industries of the biotech and the life science and their their offices are in towards Boston area um, but the property owners all um, responded with interest so as we bring in the Mansfield biotech incubator that's expanding um, we're, we're bringing in the tenant recruitment team to each of the properties together so that we could all learn what this space is, what it looks like, you know, what's the most challenging. Maybe we need to pursue a different industry depending on what we see when we get in, you know, we're, you know, we're trying to just do all things possible and as creatively as we can to even just make a connection. So. Next page. So uh, the Site Readiness Grant is finalized. There's a website that will bring you to the master report. It is 168 pages of research and information and a market study and everything you needed to know that Camoin, um, Camoin 310 Limited put together for us. So it's a pretty large document. Um, and these are the recommendations that have been provided um, for me to work towards accomplishing uh, the the pursuit of a signature development um, has been 197 Bill Ricker Road and also we are trying to um, stay real close on the 330 Bill Ricker Road with the potential uh, restaurant coming in with the drive-through so really hoping um, that that's what the signature development project will be um, both, both of those locations. So we're continuing to uh, work on the other initiatives, um, public-private partnerships, and, and all of the recommendations that you see. So um, one of those is to start making connections with the property owners, and it's been a little bit challenging. So we're getting started on some of that uh, coming up soon. Going forward into the first quarter, these um, some of my efforts on the 129 uh, program. So we are starting to formalize a, li a little bit of framework for, for marketing, talking about some signage, um, ways of how we can do that with private funding support of the major property owners as well as public. So starting to outline outline that a little bit and what that looks like, uh, wayfinding and thinking about what other conferences closer in towards Boston that I should be at or should be pushing our information out towards and creating more uh, property tours and uh, maybe a bus tour in the fall with um, to include some state agencies and um, some notable, um, you know, designations of what should be seeing this space and being aware of it. So um, these are some of my efforts coming up in the couple months. Some of the other things I'm working on, small business grant, uh, the first, first round has been completed. We've been talking about um, how to manage it a little bit differently going forward and um, some of the challenges we experienced, how we would do it differently, what, what more do we want to get out of it. Uh, that will that will start to try to take place and, and think about type type of funding and, and um, outline that program again and continue to refine it. Ribbon cutting programs going very well. You've been seeing all the invitations I've been sending out and getting great feedback. Uh, I have some more ideas on how to expand that even further. Age friendly program is getting ready to start business training in the fall. We're outlining what that is and what that means for businesses to become age friendly depending on their type of business. So I'll, I'll be sharing more information about that. Business welcome packet is um, pretty popular. I'd like to make it a little more professional than what we're working on right now is basically um, flyers and information, um, you know, generally that might 
businesses might want to be aware of, things about SCORE, things about the Chamber, uh, the ribbon cutting program. We talk about the permitting guide, um, things like that. But right now it's just a two pocket folder with a bunch of inserts in it. Um, you know, whatever any of the businesses also want to share in introducing other businesses to town. Summer Street Review is a new effort, uh, just getting going tomorrow, actually. So property owners of Summer Street have come forward and have been vocal about ways on how they'd like to feel more like they're a part of center. We're doing a site walk tomorrow with engineer to just begin some ideas of uh, concepts of renderings and streetscapings and how that how how we can make ways of, of visual changes to make it feel more like summer street more pedestrian friendly for some of the um, foot traffic in center art on the brook is um, still kind of coming out and being publicly announced that's an event in august october october 5th and 6th that is hosted and organized by the Artisans Exchange downtown, and they have a website. They have a registration page. They're well on their way to getting this off the ground. I'm working on finding them a major sponsor to help with that event, and basically it will be about 50 or 60 vendors that come out and provide um, you know, handmade wares, and there's also different sections for food, um, their website, if you Google it, out on the brook, I'm sorry, I don't have it in my slideshow, um, but they've been working really hard. Last year, they um, <coughs> implement the first ever holiday stroll as a way to promote shop local, shop small. So the hope is to find a major sponsor that will help um, support Art on the Brook to bring more foot traffic into the, into the downtown and then kind of roll that forward into the shopping season of uh, November, December. When you say major sponsor, what do you? Um, well, I'm still waiting to hear back, so I kind of didn't want to name names yet until I hear back from the the. Can you give us like a category. Banking, okay. For approached banking, right, right. yeah. Okay. So. Is there a major sponsor? Is there a, a donation? Money? We're we're looking for five thousand um, dollars to sponsor the two events. We're looking for that money to pay for uh, signage, um, talking about possibly police detail to uh, cover for that and also um, trash pickup during the event it's a two-day event so trash pickup during and after and cleanup and things like that so um, we thought five thousand dollars for both events would be a good start if you reached out to other cities and towns who have done similar events uh, to, to get tips or just to see if there are connections? Thinking like start on the street in Worcester? Yeah, there wasn't a lot of concern about um, not planning properly. I mean, um, I, I've been a part of a lot of small business events downtown, um, and I know the town has great experience with it, with the prelude and the 4th of July. And so um, I think if maybe this has been presented to uh, Center Village uh, Committee, so it's been talked about as a group yes. that understands a little bit of the details involved, but certainly open to researching a little bit and figuring that out. They are planning to put it um, in a few different locations, not you know all in one. I think um, they'll be putting out a map of where to park, where the vendors are, where the food trucks are, things like that. Um, but it is in October, so being at July, still really finalizing the, the smallest details, but there certainly is time to trucks. do some research. Yeah. That's awesome. They're, they're talking with um, the property owners or on board um, so far, they, they've been getting everybody uh, to agree with all of the plans and all of that so far has been really great. Do we need to approve food trucks the way we do beer and wine licenses or anything? No, if they are registered with the Board of Health, then they can come into town. We only have a couple this year as far as I know. Yeah. They yeah. do. If I, I love food trucks. and they We've do, been mindful they of all that. Things. There's been an email sent out <coughs> to make sure that they are following all the proper, you know, they did that a couple weeks ago already, contacting, working with Evan, working with the um, police department. They've already been doing outreach to gauge their budget and make sure that they're following all the proper rules. So pretty exciting. 
Um, and so the town is getting ready to go through a redesign on their main website, so I've been a part of that. Um, also getting my page on there for 129 in business development and age-friendly, so um, that'll be taking up some of my time in the first quarter um, from July to October. And now um, with all of the things that are happening, we've been thinking about putting a business resource guide together because it's a lot of... Um, repetitive information as we're working with small businesses so there's a there's a thought to start working on that these are my uh, major high-level goals for FY 20 throughout the year um, certainly as you saw that we spoke about getting a signature development to come into 129 and we're talking about ways to um, achieve that um, either through incentive or partnership with the private owners. Um, we're, we've just tried to talk that out a little bit and, and thinking how we're going to go about that. Um, elevate the biotech rating. We're currently at a gold status, which is pretty impressive, but the, the highest rating you can achieve is platinum, and we're not too far off from that. So I have had some very brief initial conversations with the health department, and we'll you know, be working on that much on a much concerted effort um, going forward and expanding the marketing campaign for 129 talking about signage um, so that when you enter the business park you realize you're in a business park and you're not just you know on a road with a bunch of traffic lights on it so we're talking about how to how to make that continuity there when you're in those side roads or on the main road and how we can work with the property <coughs> owners and um, do a joint funding effort and see where the municipal owned spaces if any and and all of those types of things so that's on my map there um, yep and that's it well, unless there's any other questions about anything that's what I'm up to and we'll be working on and um, plan to be back in October if not sooner, if you need me. But if there's any questions about any of the information, you know, you can stop in at any time. Great Luke, progress. Great Thank update, you. Lisa. Okay. Thank you. Great Very good. Thank you so much. Thanks. And next we have a uh, presentation from Frank Green, Director Sessing. Thank you very much. Um, first, I want to acknowledge your retirement in my office. I'm just going to make, be very quick. That Kit Bianchi is the assistant assessor and has been for 17 years, 19 years with the town. Uh, she's very much the face of the assessor's office for all those years. Uh, dedicated service, um, terrific employee and a good friend. Uh, she's retiring. Um, her and her husband are uh, moving down the southern part of the state. Just want to make mention of that. Um, tonight, what we're looking at here and what you have in front of you is the, uh, the pilot agreement with Harvard Vanguard. Uh, they began in 2010, a 10-year agreement that concluded in fiscal 19. Um, they did have the, the agreement that started off with roughly $40,000 a year with an escalator built, built into it. Again, it concluded in fiscal 19. Uh, Harvard Vanguard um, began to um, recalculate how they wanted to approach this looking forward. Um, what they've done is decided to... Um, implement a program where it's 15 percent of what the taxes would be if they were taxable, which they are not. Um, John was kind of spearheading a, a survey, did about nine or ten communities, I believe, to see if that was pretty consistent with uh, those communities, and he found that they were. Um, Braintree and Burlington specifically were very close to that, uh, if not exactly that. Um, so that's been their policy, and that's what they've offered here tonight, and that's what's in front of you this evening. Um, any questions? So basically, it looks like what we're going to getting what we're going to be getting is going down. That's correct. Roughly twenty-eight thousand dollars. I haven't set the values for fiscal twenty yet. All things being equal, we'll be hovering around that figure. So some twelve, well, more than thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars less than what it had been. Uh, they are, as I say, an exempt entity, mm -hmm. uh, nonprofit. Um, they take it upon themselves to initiate this this pilot agreement. Um, some communities didn't, uh, weren't offered it or didn't get it for some reason. Um, we are one of the lucky few that they've reached out to, to do this, recognizing that they have a, uh, just wanted to be a good resident and good citizen in the community. And we have others, do we not? And, and what, what are they generally? Are they about the same? Or? Pilots are um, a matter of negotiation. 
Mm -hmm. um, we really don't have, other than uh, choice, um, we really don't have any. Um, Lowell General doesn't have any. No. Sorry? Lowell, Lowell General. General is a not pilot agreement. They are not a pilot agreement. Oh. They're an LLC. So they're. Oh, okay. yeah. And then you have the one on Watton Street. But right. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's a different idea. type, yeah. but, but <laughs> same thing in the sense that it's a negotiation. And then we have the one at uh, Sol Swain Road Solar. That's the only That's one. right. That's that's in, in the works now. And, right. And as I say, uh, Dave Hedison's project on Littleton Road from right. a number of years ago. So is this one of those situations where it's just a gift horse and we should not yes. Apparently, yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Well put. It's not negotiating. Okay. Yeah. It's either that or, or we get nothing. Thanks. <laughs> no I think the going rate for tips is 20%, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah, motion. So, yeah, I'll make a motion that we accept the payment in lieu, in lieu of taxes agreement um, with uh, Atrius Health, also known as Harvard Vanguard Medical Associates and the amount of uh, approximately, well, in the amount of 15 percent of what they would would uh, otherwise uh, pay in property taxes as presented. All second. We have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Tom manager reports. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a few items uh, to formally bring to the board uh, attention this evening in the public. So many of these have been sent to you, uh, email uh, since our last meeting three weeks ago. The first one is, is a week ago today, the state legislature sent to the governor the FY20 fiscal year budget for the f state fiscal year that begins July 1st, 2019 through next June 30th. In that budget with three earmarks, um, for the town of Chelmsford, uh, they are listed there. Basically, the first was is, is funding not less than fifty thousand dollars to be expended to renovate and improve Roberts Field. Uh, the second was not less than hundred thousand dollars to be expended uh, by the town for the continued implementation of a business grant program, and the final one was not less than forty thousand dollars for the aid friendly initiative at the senior center. Um, so what will happen is is we we don't anticipate that the governor will will take any action on these earmarks um, when he's got till later this week. Um, he has a ten day period from the budget receipt, which is a couple days now, to finalize the state budget and either. Um, veto, sign, or send back with amendments. Um, the budget is loaded with earmarks, and so we, we have no reason to foresee that these would be called out. Um, you know, and, and again, we also want to give credit to the legislative delegation uh, in the House and the Senate um, that, that moved these initiatives into the state budget. Um, what will happen then is once the budget is approved, we'll be in coordination with the state administrative agencies. And basically what you have is much like our operating budget, you have till the end of the fiscal year to expend the money. So I've already reached out to Bill Askenberg. He's aware of the money coming from Roberts Field uh, with the advisory committee out there. Uh, certainly Deb Sirianni is aware of the age friendly. She's posted on social media and so forth, thanking the delegation. And then Lisa obviously is working to, you know, uh, with Evan and, and the EDC and others to on this business grant program. Um, so I just wanted to just formally um, notify the board and, and also thank the delegation for their efforts. Uh, and, and also just kind of keep in mind that as we next year, the process will repeat itself. The, the, you know, the governor will announce his budget in January. The House will take up the budget in April and then the Senate in May. So we ought to be thinking now or soon about what we might want next year. Next year is an election year. It's also the end of the legislative session. So, you know, we sort you know we anticipate that this process uh, of would repeat itself. So, sort of in the back of our minds, you know, what um, particular projects or initiatives in Chelmsford and, um, you know, at this point in time. So, so that's that's the update on the. Um, Earmarks. Also, while we're on the budget, the, the cherry sheets came out on Friday, uh, which are the local aid uh, revenues and, and assessments from the legislature. Uh, there was a story in Sunday's paper about this. I sent you today the printed uh, conference committee reports, which, again, are expected to be the final numbers, which will come out in the final form once the governor uh, enacts on the budget. But in essence, the budget w we anticipated in at April town meeting three months ago uh, it was virtually identical within a couple thousand dollars of the final chapter 70 education numbers and um, 
and also the uh, unrestricted local you know, general gauge was the same. Uh, what you tend to get is a little bit of fluctuation on you know charter school assessments and school choice, and that really varies on enrollment. They, as the enrollment actually takes place, they adjust it during the year. So anyway, there's no major change from what we had foreseen at town meeting. Uh, and, and it looks like with the legislative session going into recess uh, in at the end of this week, uh, there really won't be any further major en enactments that affecting local aid or education aid. Uh, and that looks like it'll be, I think what I read today is they're hoping to have that done by the end of the calendar year, but certainly by the end of the legislative session, which will be next July. That's sort of the drop date. As you know, the legislature acts in two year sessions. This is the first year of this session. Then obviously they'll continue until next July, and then they'll end the session. Then they go to the election cycle, and then start up the following January. Um, another thing I wanted to n note, and again, it's been reported, um, and um, and I'd send it to you, is I just want to acknowledge the efforts by our town clerk, Patricia Doris, um, who obtained her designation as a certified municipal clerk uh, from the International Institute of Municipal Clerks. Um, again, this was a three-year initiative, and much like we saw when our town accountant came in and she was committed and, and Darlene became a, certified as an accounting officer, you know, Trisha has obviously followed it at and, and obviously has followed the efforts of Honorina who had a similar delegation, so a designation. So it's, you know, it's, it's something to be noted. Um, towards that end, related to that is, uh, and also one of the goals of the board um, identified was to uh, address the, the response for the 2020 census, which is coming up next April 1st. Um, towards that end, um, we, uh, I've established a complete count committee for the 2020 census, obviously involves the town clerk, myself. And we looked back a decade ago, and there was a three-person committee formed at that point in time. It was um, two of the people who agreed to come forward, Mike Rigney and Pat Wojcic, uh, and the, the other gentleman moved to Ohio. He was on the finance committee. Um, and so um, so Mike Kowalik, who actually works for the census uh uh, bureau, he's uh, he's agreed to come on. So Tim McElvaina won't be here. He did it ten years ago. So Tim sort of will step in the place with with uh, by, by Michael. And obviously, as we you know, we'll meet you know after Labor Day, and then you know the whole issue would be putting notices out when we do the the tax bills and the census and banners and signage and reaching out to the faith communities and so forth. Um, so I just wanted the board to know that we have established. Um, you know, a complete count committee, and uh, you know, we'll be working obviously with the state secretary of state's office and others to promote a uh, positive response uh, next year's pa decennial census. Paul, in the list of people that mm -hmm. you reach out to, yep. um, could you maybe do an early reach out to the town Democratic and Republican committees sure. because we had um, interest earlier this year from both of them. To contribute to this effort, and I think they're going to also be involved in other awareness raising efforts across Greater Lowell. So I think it would yeah. be a worthwhile connection to make. To okay, yeah, we'll reach out to them. I don't want to be confused us with redistricting. That's all. Uh, no, that, okay, all right, okay, all right, okay, all right, okay. Because that, that comes the same that comes right thing. after that. It's that's not, two years it's later. Not about okay, that. They're, okay, it's a about the census okay. count. Okay, so we'll reach out to them. Maybe yeah. we'll reach out to the Republican yeah. and Democratic Town Committee, and and uh, we'll do that. And then the final thing I have, which is probably the most lengthy, um, is, you know, as we approach the end of July, we're, we're now, you know, staring at the, uh, the fall town meeting. Um, in three months, we'll be gathering at the senior center. Um, how the process lays out is we meet this evening. I give you the first draft, um, sort of the full items that I know that are on the plate. Your next meeting is three weeks from now. I'll give you a second draft. And then your following meeting, the Monday after Labor Day, which I believe is the 9th of September, you'll be signing the warrant for the fall annual town meeting. Uh, and then finance committee will probably meet that Thursday and, and you know, go through the articles and then get their report out by the beginning of October so it can be printed and distributed. Um, what I have here is a list of tw 28 articles, um, you know, many of which are on every fall town meeting, but many of which are, are sort of placeholders or possibilities. And I'll just sort of 
quickly walk through them. And again, if you have any questions or new items, and as we noted earlier, there's still time for citizen petitions. Um, but you know, the first one is always reports of offices and committees. After that, we keep a placeholder for funding of collective bargaining agreements, which we're hoping to bring some to fall town meeting. Third one is just a placeholder if there are any amendments to the fiscal year 20 operating budget. At this point, there are not. We don't foresee any, but right now it's a placeholder. The fourth one is the sewer construction stabilization fund. You may recall that the way that fund works is, is once the books are closed for the end of the fiscal year, the town accountant and finance director calculate the amount of interest that went to the town's general fund from the sewer capital investments because uh, and then that month that gets voted at the town meeting to put it into the sewer capital fund. So it, it's an annual event, but it has to be done uh, because that's just the way state finance works. So we we'll, should have that number for you, certainly uh, by your meeting in September. Uh, the fifth one is a placeholder, um, which, we, again, we know will be acted upon. That's the uh, funding of the town's portion of the Massachusetts School Building Authority's Accelerated Repair Program for the South Rural Elementary School uh, roof where a portion of that's being replaced that was just presented to the school committee last uh, week and and we'll be, I'll be working with dr. Lang and and superintendent Persichetti to submit the paperwork and and require documentation to the MSBA so that we'd be then be assigned a project manager and, and designer and then get going on that but we have to fund our portion of that um, the next item is the com comes into now funding requests um, and sort of, again, one-time requests. First one is Fire Chief Gary Ryan has informed me that um, as a result of uh, recent OSHA inspection of his equipment at the fire station, he needs to replace the uh, self-contained breathing apparatus unit, you know, the air compressor units that fill the tanks for the firefighters. Um, so that will be coming forth at town meeting. Um, the next one is a safety one. It's, it's arisen from the, some of the traffic safety and school concerns, and that would be the installation of the flashing beacons at school crosswalks. Um, a number of the schools, particularly those on major roads, do not have those at schools. So, for example, there's one here on, at Center School, but yet there is not one at the McCarthy School. Or over by Harrington and so forth. So we're working with with Public Works to identify. I think it's going to be eight locations. We'll bring those forth, and then towards that end, I've also made a request to Representative Golden um, to install one. And this came out of the traffic hearing at the intersection by the fire North Fire Station, North Town Hall, the crossing there. That's a state road. So we've made a request to uh, Representative Golden, informing him of what we're doing for our safety cross at, at intersections at schools, but that a, a major concern was also heard at that location. So we've asked him to reach out to the Mass DOT District 3 if we can get that done. Um, next one is the DPW off of road facility. Um, many of you recall that project. We, we need to install the top final coat of bituminous or the blacktop out of that facility we're still on the binder coat and the problem is now we're seeing the binder coat deteriorate so we need to act on that because if you lose that then you're basically you know going backwards you're replacing what's there um, the, the final one also is a placeholder for the high school parking lot you remember we did the whole back portion we still have the front and again these are placeholders may not act on because I don't know where we're going to be at the end once the books close and, and everything comes in where they're still closing on the Merrimack River uh, Riverbank project where the revenues are coming in on that and so forth from the federal government uh, through the state as well as from the residents at uh, Williamsburg so again the, I don't have a free cash number so we have a number of placeholders some of which may or may not be acted upon um, related to that is we also have an article to transfer free cash to reduce the property tax levy. You remember Paul Ragazio was in and reminded the board and requested that. So that's on there. Similar, we put one in to put free cash to the general stabilization fund. Um, the cemetery commission will once again be coming for additional funds to, to continue the cemetery improvement um, that they've been working on for multiple years. You may recall that's a multi-year project where I think he's about two-thirds of the way through that. Uh, at, at Pine Ridge. Um, next one is we have to annually appropriate the 
money from the uh, what's called the Commonwealth Transportation and Infrastructure Fund. That's the 20 cents per ride, you know, for the ride share. Um, the number did go up this year, and I'll give you all that data as we get closer to that. Um, the next one is Community Preservation Fund. Uh, I, as I mentioned, we had the earmark in the state budget f for what would be the perimeter walking area and so forth. But one of the things we need to do, and we heard from the baseball folks, is we, we've already lost one season for the ball fields, and so the, the goal would be to go to community preservation and get the funds to do the ball field pro portion of that project, you know, moving the baseball with the soccer field, uh, the backstops, and so forth. So that will be going to CPC. Unfortunately, the way the schedule unfolds is the Community Preservation Committee did not meet in July. They will be meeting in August, but because they meet the third Wednesday, their meeting in August will actually be after your meeting in August, but we should be fine for final in September. Um, similar to that, there's a request regarding the planning and design for the pedestrian bridge across Beaver Brook in the town center as part of the Brook Walk. Could you clarify where that pedestrian bridge is? That, this has nothing to do with Nine Acton Road. This is the original one as you, what's, what's known as the, the old dam location. If, if, you, if you look, if you recall the land that was donated to us um, from Gristmill, there's the Brook Crossing and Portions of the dam are still present there, but you you can't safely cross that with by going to you know because stones and so forth. It's it's to but put a pedestrian with, crossing. With, with the bridge, you got that cream. You, you, I, I guess my so fun. I, my fundamental question is: Would that bridge cross over land that is owned by other property owners, where we would? need to know that they're not planning to develop or do something No, no, the, the so town, the town owns land on both sides. The, the land trust is on the other side. Okay. Yeah, so it's not so private it's not property. Pro it's not crossing no. any private property? No. Okay. It's not private property. It's, it's town land, and then the land trust land goes after that as you head out towards Bartlett Woodlot and, and Bartlett Park. Uh, we, we Again, we'll have a map that shows yeah. you that. Um, the next one is the building facade program in the town center in Vinyl Square. Again, that comes from the Senate Village and the Vinyl Square Master Plan Committees. Again, that's through community preservation. Um, and speaking to the town accountant and finance director, we need we have uh, authorized but unissued debt for the Chelmsford Forums. I think it's approximately $100,000. So it, it, we just want to get it off the books. It's never been borrowed, but it's out there authorized. So we take a vote to just rescind that. We also have similar thing with the completed uh, Progress Avenue sewer pump station. We'll rescind the balance. I think it's roughly ninety thousand dollars. That again, that just puts the money back into the sewer capital fund, capital improvement fund, uh, capacity fund. I'm sorry. Uh, and then the Article 19 is sewer capital projects, um, similar to the town's capital projects. These are projects that are funded through the sewer enterprise fund. These have to do with new roofs on sewer pump stations and so forth. Um, so again, you'll see a list of those that are coming in uh, for consideration because what happens is it's also the close of the year of the enterprise fund, so they have their cash balances, and then we move forward with their capital plans. Um, we have the home rule petition that's been discussed by this board to change the name of the board of selectmen to select board. Um, I drafted an article that makes all the revisions in the charter, uh, similar to uh, communities that have gone before us. It, it requires a home rule petition goes to the legislature and then gets enacted. Um, the next one, next uh, five, and I think it's ultimately gonna be six articles are zoning bylaw amendments, one having to do with Route 40 Groton Road, one related to that, which would be to amend the COID, or Commercial en Enhancement and Investment Overlay District to allow multifamily and industrial areas. Again, these were discussed at last Wednesday night's planning board meeting. Uh, next one is they're working on as a bringing forth potentially a bylaw to, to dealing with pre-existing non-conforming single and two-family residential lots. Uh, the next one is a minor update to the cluster open space zoning bylaw. And then I know they were still working on, I think Nancy Arroway's working on one regarding the historic preservation and reuse. You may come back with the, remember that was unsuccessful at the previous meeting. And then the last one, which isn't listed there, but I, I know is gonna be discussed at the planning board and it was mentioned in passing and also at the zoning board is, is to, uh, amend the zoning bylaw to eliminate the sign advisory committee. Uh, and the reason for that is most of the responsibilities that were 
performed by the Sign Advisory Committee, which is advisory to the Board of Appeals, have now been transferred to the Planning Board. Um, so again, that's that's the zoning articles. Um, and then you've got a few a few remaining articles. One would be real estate tax exemption for parents and guardians of deceased act, active service members. This is an article being worked on by our veterans agent Regina Jackson in Frank Green in the assessor's office, and basically the town has the adoption, the ability to adopt a provision of state law that would provide a 100% exemption for parents and, and guardians of deceased active service members. And I believe we may have two or three in town that qualify into that. Um, so we, this would just be to, this one and the next one would just be to adopt the mass to, You law. have to accept the, you accept the, the, provision. the provisions of the state law, which basically means the town funds it. So in other words, the state says, we'll allow you to do it, but it's on your dime. So when we get reimbursed for veterans assistance or for property tax exemption, this is not part of it. So basically the state does is they say, well, you can do it, but it's, it's the local option and local, you absorb the cost locally. But again, if we're assessing $100 million in property tax, this, I think it's worthy of consideration by the community to, you know, to provide that, that exemption. And then similarly, this is one that's, again, a recent modification of state law, and we're now seeing it pop up in some other communities, namely Westford and Acton. And that would be we would waive dog licensing fees for dogs owned by residents age 70 or older. Do they have to be 70? Can we? Yes, can we the statute. So, so the statute Yeah, to 75. exactly. You, you can't make 75. You can't do 60. You know, yeah, 68. You and it's, o it's only for dogs. It can't be for other. Oh, we don't license. Bees. We don't license cats. Yeah, no, I know we don't license oh, yeah. cats. I don't. License, don't license you don't license cats. You pay no. fees to, permit fees to have chickens, right? See, you, you, this goes. This is how we work in Massachusetts. <laughs> because see, there's no. All had darts right no, now. No, no, because. <laughs> <laughs> because it, we don't, it, it, people seem to understand that we're more, we don't have sovereign municipal authority in Massachusetts. We, we exist as a creature of the state. There's 351 cities and towns, a number of water districts, fire districts, school districts. We all exist because of the state, which means we have no inherent rights as a community, and uh, meaning home, what they often refer to as home rule rights, as, as opposed to other areas of, of the country where there is local authority and unincorporated areas and so forth. That's not how it works. We're a commonwealth of Massachusetts. We exist as the state. And the only way to do those other type of things is to do a home rule petition, which would be to get a special act of the legislature to, you know, to, to and that's why, for example, even, even noble things like we're going to provide a senior property tax relief program that you've seen in places such as Sudbury and Concord, those all have to go through the legislature. You know, as we always talk about, we can't issue tax bills without legislative approval. They review our values and so forth. So so when I tell you that it's age 70 or older, it's a, here's the state law. You can accept this provision to waive at age 70 or older. It doesn't say waive at whatever age the local town decides should be waived. So the says, short answer to your qu it question says is- It says a dog. Does that mean one dog per? Uh, no, it's-, it's, it's for for a, I think a is general. So I think if if a person owned multiple dogs, they would still have it waived, um, and it's a a person aged seventy or older. So th those are the provisions of, of the. So and and the funny part is is it only provides the license fee. So if they actually forget and do the late fee, we can't waive the late fee. So the, you you see these notices go out, and we've seen them from these other communities who have recently adopted this, they put on the thing, please note that, you know, you, you, your fee is waived at age 70 or older, but this does not apply to late fees. The, um, yeah, because they still have to license they them. They still have to license them. So it's not an exemption, it's it's a waiver, and mm -hmm. and therefore, if you don't do it, then you're subject to the late fee. So again, and this came from the town clerk, Patricia Durer, she said, you know, again, we're always looking at what little things we can do to help seniors remain in the community and age friendly and all that. So Our birthday cutoff date, like the schools. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I need details, man. I, I, I think it's at the time of licensing. So, okay. um, chicken owners get no break, though. No, no, exactly. Nope. So. Nothing. Sorry, Ken. And then the final one that I'm aware of, chicken and owner. this is a return. Uh, the recycling committee has uh, is resubmitting the uh, proposal to. Uh, regarding the retail use of single-use plastic checkout bags, um, all they changed was the date of implementation. I think I, I, I caught it on the draft. I didn't have it in the draft that was sent to you. But they are once again going to ask, ask in the wake of a number of communities around us now having implemented this um, and the state not having implemented a statewide ban, they are going to come and ask the town meeting once again to to eliminate the retail use of single-use plastic checkout bags, which will be effective as of July 1 of 2020. So um, so again, you're probably looking at certainly at least two nights of town meeting 
uh, with these items. So that's what I have. Again, I'll bring you an, another draft, an update uh, three weeks from now at your next meeting, and then the fall. And again, also, if you're thinking between now and September, if there's any particular order or things you want to do, please let me know so that way when I come on uh, on September 9th, we have the final form for approval and then send out to the constable. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. And then the last thing I have on my report, and, and I want to thank Virginia for catching this. Um, we, when we had our last meeting, the discussion, it was about the traffic um, art, uh, hearing items, and, and Michael's here. He can just update the board in terms of where we're at and also what he has the list. Thank you. Could, could we get these before our meeting yeah, going forward? Yeah, this made it after. I'm sorry, we apo I apologize. This, this, this failed to get onto the agenda. I'm I, not asking for I anything. Caught it late, yeah. Pat. Right, all I I'm didn't asking give is, much I'm not having any discussion. I just want to distribute this to you because you're here this evening. It'll, we'll put it on at a future meeting. But we are all here, and I, we didn't want to just send it out by email because we, we, we you know, again, it was an oversight. Um, but, but I just asked but, Michael. But a little homework assignment with this, exactly. which we discussed, which, yeah. I guess, was. You know, is the board members could take this list, go back, and then kind of look at it and decide, you know, maybe they agree with which groups and who's looking at it, whether it's police, DPW, um, if there's any in particular that they're. So basically, it's going to be on, on our next agenda and not on tonight. Right, but so I just, wanted, I just I wanted to get it to you. We just wanted to get it to you, and then again, I just offer the information my... to look at for next time. Exactly. Thank you. And there is a, uh, a legend on the last page. I put codes. So as I created this, this was based on the speakers that came up that evening. Um, I put their number, uh, excuse me, their name. The priority is something that uh, initially I started trying to take a crack at in that first column. Um, when they mentioned the street, I wrote it down, the main issue. The agency at the time that I thought it might apply to, and there's a category in the codes for those categories I came up with solely on my own, and they're listed in the back. G is general traffic, CW, crosswalk, TK, trucks, speed truck exclusion so some of the comments were redundant but I just wanted you to see what came up if the chairman said that night it came in via email or text it was noted in the last column otherwise it was from someone in the audience um, since I made this table I've shared this with uh, the police chief the DPW department and I did explain some of these to the fire chief we met for our initial traffic safety meeting last week. That's going to meet monthly. We'll be looking at these issues as well as others. I can tell you that speaking with DPW, they're going to be looking at some. They've already cut back some of the uh, brush and the trees along some of the side roads that have been addressed here and through other complaints that have come in. Uh, we continue to work on the potholes. As you know, we transferred money to take care of that. Uh, I've already started talking with Pan Am, and they're working with DPW to fix the railroad crossing over at School Street. Um, working with the chief of police, we've stepped up enforcement in many of the areas that were brought up that evening, um, and we're continuing to look at the issues with DOT about truck exclusions, uh, not only in North Chelmsford, but in some of the other areas that were brought up. So we are working on these, and I'll have an update on some of the status, if possible, for the next meeting. Thank you, Mike. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's my report for this evening. Let's see. We have appointments. Yeah. Uh, on, be, on behalf of the town clerk, Patricia Doris, we have the uh, attached a list of appointments for election workers for the upcoming uh, election cycle during this fiscal year. Where, as noted in her her uh, cover letter, the, these these appointments have to take place between. No, no earlier than June, July 15th and no later than August 15th. And so she provides a detailed list of, of most, you know, four pages of election workers. Most of these are recurring people. And obviously, if, you know, if, if something were to happen during the year, we would substitute. But we want to have just formally on record uh, the list of election workers for your approval this evening. So those with the X's, I assume they're out of town. Is that correct? Yes. So are we in need of more election workers? Always welcome new election workers because issues arise, you know, that during the year, you know, we can then move people around. So I'll make a motion that we approve the election workers as presented. A second. A motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Manager. All right. Uh, now we would just want to take a Quick one on uh, Board of Selectmen policies. Pat, you did a little bit of work in this, so you want to? 
bring us up to speed. Okay, the first one that we have here is the, the policy for lowering the flag to half staff. Um, we've had situations recently where uh, prominent uh, residents have passed away and and it's always a question as to as to whether the flag the, should be lowered and if so, you know, when and for how long. So um, I just came up with, um, you know, some thoughts that um, I had had and that had been discussed previously with other boards. Um, we never have put it in, in a formal policy, but um, so that's what, what this is and what this does. And, and just for, um, you know, a, uh, informational, purposes, um, our, our typical policy to uh, approve policies is that we review them um, at one meeting, but we don't, we won't vote to accept them till at least the following meeting, just like we do for alcohol licenses. So we have an opportunity to, to consider it uh, in more detail. Um, if anybody has any other thoughts about uh, lowering the flag to half staff, I mean, we, we want to, it's, it should be, it shouldn't be something that happens frequently, in my mind, it should be something that obviously shows respect for the person who has passed away. Um, so we want to be sure that um, the people that it recognizes um, are, are deserving and, uh, and not that it's done on such a regular basis that it becomes meaningless. Okay. And the second policy? Okay. Any thoughts on that one? or? <coughs> Well, I mean, we can. Okay, we can do them both. So. Yeah, and, but do you, I just figured that we take it away, take it home. Okay. Talk about it at the next one. And okay, except it was in your packet, so you were able to read it before you came and to I the did. meeting. Okay. Does anybody else want to discuss it? I mean, that's. My only thought is, that I think the key is that last sentence. It, um, right. If you go back to the the. Yeah. The, the may be ordered in special circumstances as determined on a case-by-case -case basis by the chair of the board of selectmen and or town manager. There are a number of people who've, who are not being elected official, we but who've given, <laughs> who have to mention it, who've given so much to the town that you'd say, oh my gosh, that we'd be, them and that person's family would be slighted. But you're right, you, you, when you start specifying everything, you'd, you know, because you can think of people who've, who've served the community for decades in an appointed capacity, but yeah. That you you know should be right. similarly treated. And, so I think and, that's the key. Yeah. That that to me the whole thing is that last paragraph is yeah. it does give the flexibility of something extraordinary. And and one in, in the in the you know several years past was um, was Walter Headland, <laughs> yeah, who had never served example. in an yeah. elected capacity, um, but he absolutely deserved uh, that designation that yeah. recognition. Um, the, the other is a draft policy for the displaying of what I'm referring to as non-governmental flags. These have to do with the advocacy flags, such as the, the pride flag that uh, um, was displayed uh, uh, last month in, in June for, for Pride Month. Um, I, um, Ken, you had asked to come up with you know, some um, procedure to follow, some policy. Um, it turns out that I, I could not really find other communities that have really much. Um, some of them just let anything go. Some don't let anything other than the, the, gov the U.S. government, the U.S. flag, the state flag, and if you have one, a town flag, and the, obviously the POW MIA flag. Um, so this, it, it allows somebody to bring it to us. Um, I mean, I guess I would say since um, we approved a proclamation for for Pride Month, that kind of gives permission, although it should probably be stated yes or no that it, it does or does not. Um, and if somebody wanted to um, come forward with another advocacy type of uh, initiative to have a different, you know, another flag to be flown, this would kind of be the process they would follow. I think it it should be this board that determines yes or no. Um. Uh, it, the only concern I have is it's very similar to signs on municipal property. You remember we had the issue of signs, yeah. and I think you you may get into the free speech issue of yes or no. In other words, and I've shared this with Pat, so I'm not mm. you know calling her on it, but you can imagine that you, you know you could see you can imagine the freedom of speech arguments that if. You know, for example, if we if we allow a you know a particular sign and then say, oh, we don't like that expression of speech and so forth, I think the flag thing wraps right into that, uh, so to speak, of that, you know, it, and so that's I just 
that, I think that's maybe why you find a dearth of any kind of documentation or ability out there. Um, and again, I'm not advocating on, on anything. I'm just trying to give you a heads up because you can imagine what would come if one month you vote such a group's flag and the next month you say, no, we're not inclined to favor that one. You, you, you know, and, and even some of those that are even endorsed by the federal or state government, if you start looking at some of the presidential proclamations, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, you can imagine how, you know, and you've seen how they've changed different uh, different administrations. You can see how it becomes polarizing. So where they mm-hmm. where they where they don't have such a policy mm-hmm. is it is it done on a case by case? Every single one is done on a case by case basis, or I think it's really I think it's really done. I think that's the it's issue. Just really it's just really done. Really done, and I think that's what you you mm-hmm. get into. It's usually just limited yeah. state town. Uh, yeah, federal. Yeah. yeah, and again, I'm not trying to squash anything, but it, but my advice would be is whatever you come up with, you should run that by council because I think mm. that's bordering on on the free speech issue. Um, you know, and I know it's silly, but if you fly if you allow a fly a flag for Arbor Day, and then someone comes in and says, well, I want to fly a flag for you know, so yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, ice cream day or whatever, and they say, well, wait a minute, you you allowed one for Arbor Day, that that, that it, it's very similar to the signs on municipal property issue that we struggled with a few years ago, so. Mm. Um, again, my only counsel would be to whatever you do is to send it through town council before it becomes effective. Once, because I just don't want us caught on something where you know we're caught on uh, uh, you know unaware, and then we're flying or, or displaying something that we're not you know community's not comfortable with. Right, and, and I think even as as with the other one, I think this should be rare. But um, the other option is to have is as Paul said to have none. That's and that's a shame. And that's a shame too. Right. Right. Yes, right. That's what I mean. Have none. Yeah. Just the first paragraph is the other option. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a shame too because I. And then I, I, we said to say typically there is you've got you got a lot of value. You got a lot of positive feedback from certain things that you do, and then this becomes the what the, the struggle. You know, I, I'm willing to do whatever, but I'm just very nervous about what's going to be coming down the pike in the next four months. Um, so. In terms of what ideas that have been floated by me on what people want to put a flag up for i mean so i think that there are broadly accepted flags i mean like ice cream day or you know hoagie sandwich day or whatever like (laughs) i went went looking i mean mean, yes there are some there are some fascinating you know national months of you know whatever no that there are some that 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 that, that there are some that have some comedic I'd value. I'd just nip it in the bud, yep. but, yep. No, but, but there are some serious ones. I mean, but there are some really serious ones that right, have value that are, and weight. Right, but there are also some that are very polar. I mean, for example, I believe even serious thi- ones are polarizing. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. I think this president has done one regarding pro life. Val- You've had and other presidents per- who didn't. And, yeah, well, that's where that's I'm where, going. That's where that's where I think that's where it becomes the the yep. the, the, the struggle. And again, I'm uh, we're not advocating or taking sides, but that becomes I think that becomes the issue. Is I have, I, my guess is we're going to be seeing questions like that. Yeah. So I just would. I just wanted to get ahead of it, but if you guys want to roll the dice, it's fine with me too. Well, again, my advice would be whatever you do, roll it through council before you implement right. it, okay. because I, j- I just want you aware of unfortunately what may happen. Again, I, my, I'm not legal counsel, but I just giving you my counsel as advice. Sadly. So you think about I mean, it I for think three that weeks. There, there. Um, I mean, I could certainly see certain groups flying flags that are seriously questionable for mm-hmm. a variety of reasons. And I think that you can look at precedent and the legality of the causes they back or the origin of that. And, and I well, think. for necessarily the ones that we should be judging that. Because mm-hmm. you open yourself up. Right, and a different board might have a different perspective. Mm hmm. All right, so we'll think about it and talk about it in three weeks. Okay, and if you want, I can come up with, with two, one that would be similar to this and, and see what town council says, and the other one that basically is the first paragraph with its stronger language that says that's absolutely all that we fly. Or maybe even give us advice not to do anything. But so, yeah. so there's a third right. option, don't do anything. Yeah, although I think it would be good to have it in a policy so that we don't have somebody coming yep. asking to do something okay anything else on that I 
brings us to meeting minutes. Okay, the, we have three sets of uh, executive session minutes. Um, I'll do um, parts one and two. Uh, make a motion to approve uh, parts one and two of executive session minutes from July 8, 2019, not to be released. I will, second. I will second. A motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And for part three, uh, I'll make a motion um, to approve the executive session meeting minutes for um, for July 8th, uh, again, not to be released. A second. Motion is second. All in favor? Okay. Aye. And I abstain for that one. All right, we're almost there. Selectman liaison reports. Who wants to start? Virginia, sure. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, in, in addition to recognizing Al Thomas's service, uh, as was uh, referenced earlier in the meeting, the school committee also would like to acknowledge that Al is going to be receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Massachusetts Association of School Committees in November, and that'll be presented at their annual conference on the Cape. So again, we thank Al for his service and congratulations on the award. Um, they also wanna send another reminder that uh, anyone who is going to ride the bus, whether or not you have to pay a, p a fee, must register. So bus registration is still open, so if you have students who are gonna ride the bus, please register them. Uh, the planning board's meeting on August 14th will address the drafts of the articles that Paul mentioned earlier. They are also going to include a continuation of the 278-282 Mill Road public hearing, and there may be a continuation of the 9 Acton Road applicability, applicability finding uh, if the developer chooses to come back to that meeting and is ready for that. And from the Vinyl Square Strategic <coughs> Action Committee, uh, the committee and DPW are hosting a meeting for residents on August 15th at 6 p.m. at the Varney Boathouse. And the purpose of the meeting is to discuss how the community can continue to enjoy the park, any suggested improvements, um, events, fundraising. Uh, it's open to anyone. And the objective that the committee has is to form a park and playground subcommittee to help focus in this area for Varney Park. Thank you. George. I'll sit. Emily. Pat. Okay. Um, okay. Last Friday, uh, uh, Paul and I attended the graduation at the Youth Public Safety Academy that uh, Sheriff Katujian runs every year. Uh, there were a bunch of kids from Chelmsford there that graduated, and this is a, an, an excellent program, teaches kids all about um, safety, uh, cyber security, uh, you know, they, they meet with the police chief and the fire chief about uh, fire safety and how to keep you, yourselves and your, yourself and your, your family safe. Um, definitely a, a, a great um, a program that the, that the sheriff does, so congratulations to all the kids that graduated last Friday. Um, uh, an, an item that I recently found out about that I, I didn't even know existed, and it shows the, the, it uh, indicates the talent of some of our local residents. Um, there was a, a, a bridge tournament held in Las Vegas recently, and a local resident, Jean Kidd, went to that bridge tournament. I didn't even know that they had one. And her team um, were, was named the International Champions of Bridge. Wow. I mean, I think that's, that's pretty cool. impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> congratulations to uh, to Jean Kidd. Do you know how to play bridge? I do not. <coughs> so, anyway, but she obviously knows how to play very well. Um, and just to to bookmark uh, um, the announcement that was made, uh, the first public service announcement that was made this evening about the um, military uh, appreciation cookout, volunteer veteran appreciation cookout that will be held on August 13th at the Elks in their pavilion. Everybody is invited. We hope to see everybody there, and I especially want to invite this gentleman I met last week in Regina Jackson's office. His name is Tom. I don't want to mention his last name, but I'm hoping to see Tom at that cookout. Great. Told him I'd mention his name tonight. <laughs> All right, with that, do we have any press questions? 
None. Uh, looks like next item. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we adjourn to executive session to discuss the appointment of outside labor counsel to invest allegations, investigate allegations related to our, the arbitration process with the Joint Labor Management Committee and not to return to uh, open session. I will second. Motion to second. All in favor? Roll call. Roll call. Oh, roll call. Aye. 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 Please give me those roll calls. Have fun, kids. So, how many else? Do you didn't have any. Okay. You didn't have any.